Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and I sit on the board of the International Menopause Society. And today I'm joined by Dr. Louise Newson. Louise, welcome, and please tell our viewers who you are. Hi, so I'm Dr. Louise Newson. I'm a GP and menopause specialist in Stratford upon Avon in the UK. So, for women who are listening to us today, firstly, women worry about breast cancer, women worry about stroke perhaps, but don't necessarily understand the relationship between menopause and cardiovascular disease. So could you speak to that, please? Yeah, absolutely. So cardiovascular disease just means a disease of the heart and the circulation as well. And because we have estrogen receptors, on cells all over our body. We also have them lining our blood vessels. We have them in our heart. Um, and this is very important actually, because what they do is they work to reduce any inflammation, any atheroma, any furring of the arteries or hardening of the arteries. So when women are young and still having their periods, they are actually far less likely to have heart disease or high blood pressure um, than older women. And we see from research that when women reach the age of the menopause, the incidence of heart disease really increases very rapidly. And this is because they don't have the protective effects of estrogen. So we can see that when women go through the menopause, their risk of a heart attack is actually increases by about a factor of five. A lot of research in heart disease has been done on men and women actually present quite differently or quite often differently to men who are having a heart attack. So they might not have the classic central crushing chest pain that men describe. It might be that they feel lightheaded or dizzy or just the pain in their arm. And so it's very important that we're tuned in to heart disease as physicians because we know that the actual prognosis is slightly worse actually for postmenopausal women if they have a heart attack. There are but if, I, if I'm a menopausal woman and I look on the internet, one of the things that I see when I look on the internet is that hormones are going to give me heart disease. So for our women who are confused and listening, can you speak directly to them about this notion that, that the hormones are going to give you heart disease and they're going to give you a heart attack and they're going to give you a stroke? Absolutely. And it's it's very confusing. I completely understand that. So I've already said going through the menopause is increasing your risk. And then everyone's thinking, well, if it's increasing because I've got low estrogen levels, surely having those estrogen levels back will be better. But then you're saying there's all this confusion. And what happened was there was a big study that came out in 2002, and it was giving um, estrogen in quite a high dose as a tablet with a type of progesterone that was synthetic, a progestogen it's called, um, together. And they gave it to women who were in their 60s. And a lot of these women had already had heart attacks. So once women have had heart attacks or have established heart disease, they have narrowing of the arteries, furring of the arteries, and it's very different to the clean, if you like, inside of women's arteries when they're healthy. Um, so these women, a few of them had more heart disease. And so people were thinking, gosh, that's the HRT that's caused it. We need to stop giving HRT to women. But then what they did is analyze the study and they've looked at other studies and found that when women start taking HRT, or um, sort of in the first 10 years after a menopause or when they're perimenopausal, when their periods start changing and they experience menopausal symptoms, those women have nice clean arteries already. Giving those women estrogen actually helps keep those arteries clean because it stops any inflammation, it helps the vessels to relax, they're slightly to cause blood pressure. And we know that it's about a, a 50% reduction of having a heart attack in women who take HRT. So we need to look at the types of HRT. There are different types. Generally giving the estrogen through the skin as a patch, gel or spray is safer. And also giving a natural progesterone because some of these synthetic progesterones appear to have an increased risk of heart disease as well. So there's come on. I'm a woman who's been put on menopausal hormone therapy for a few years. Many women are told um, that they must stop the menopausal hormone therapy, that there's, there's an end date, a shelf life expiry, if you will, that if you've been on it for a number of years, you must stop. Yes, and I think that's because we say in the guidelines, the menopause guidelines, that the, the, the most benefits of taking HRT is starting it within 10 years of the menopause or under the age of 60. So that means people think, oh, 60, right, I need to stop, it's too dangerous. Well, no, of course it isn't, because those women have started HRT, and then you can carry on, because when you take HRT or menopausal hormonal therapy, 
you're replacing the missing hormones, they're going to be low forever unless we take HRT. And so we know we've got the benefits if we carry on taking them, the benefits to our heart, but also to our bones and brain. So we can carry on taking them forever as long as the benefits outweigh the risks. And for the majority of that women, it is forever. So there isn't an upper age. And if your physician or healthcare provider is suggesting that you stop, you really need to, to ask why, because there isn't an increased risk of anything. And if you have oestrogen through the skin, there's no risk of clot either. So the, the heart um, protective effects are there as long as you take the HRT. And if I'm a, um, a menopausal woman and I do have high blood pressure, does that mean that I cannot be on menopausal hormone therapy? Yeah, this comes up a lot. And actually it's very reassuring to know that you can still take HRT the safest type of HRT for women with raised blood pressure is having the estrogen through the skin with the natural progesterone. And there are some studies that show that those types of HRT actually lower blood pressure or are neutral to blood pressure. If a woman's blood pressure is very high, then she might need to take antihypertensives, so blood pressure lowering treatments. And that's safe to have as well as menopausal hormonal therapy. And then it's important looking at other risk factors. So for some women, um, it's looking at exercise, looking at diet, where are they smoking? Alcohol actually can really increase blood pressure as well. Taking HRT or menopausal hormonal therapy actually lowers cholesterol as well. So there's a lot of women who are worried they've got raised cholesterol, they've got raised blood pressure, they're worried about heart disease, maybe they've got heart disease in their family. Well, actually, HRT should be considered first line because it will lower cholesterol, probably lower blood pressure, certainly lower cardiovascular disease. So there's lots of real advantages of HRT, which sadly a lot of women and healthcare professionals still don't realise. So as a woman, if I'm in my 50s or 60s, what about lifestyle? Often women aren't told anything about lifestyle at all. It's really important. And I certainly feel for me as a healthcare uh, practitioner, we should be giving holistic um, advice and support to our patients. And as you know, a lot of menopausal women find keeping their lifestyle good can be very difficult because the symptoms of the menopause can be very disabling. Um, but it's very important to look at our diet, trying to reduce modified sugar, to try and um, look at our gut microbes, because there might be some advantage in that with our cardiovascular system as well. Trying to um, look at healthy foods that are less processed as well is really important. Also, anyone who smokes, clearly there are lots of reasons not to smoke, reducing alcohol as well. Um, and exercise is really important. It's really important that people find exercise that suits them as well. Um, there might be a bit of evidence that the sort of high, the high intensity hitch type exercise can actually be a bit more of a strain onto the, um, the sort of cortisol, the stress access might, might be detrimental. But actually, if people enjoy exercise, it doesn't really matter what they do. Even if that exercise is just walking up the stairs instead of getting the lift, it, it's a start. So just trying to be active. It's good for our hearts, but it's also good for our bones and our brain and our general well-being as well. So I think, you know, for us as women who see a lot of mixed messages in the media, it can be very difficult to sort through what it is we should be doing. And that pervasive message that hormones will give you heart disease or hormones will give you a stroke and so on is something that I'm hearing you tell women you need to undo that messaging. It's absolutely, it's really important. Any information that we're given as women, we need to look at the source. So if it's from our friends, we need to see what they've read. If it's on the internet, go and see who's written it. Make sure it is evidence-based because there's so much noise and there's so much misunderstanding about um, menopausal hormonal therapy and HRT, which sadly has gone on for the last 20 years. So, you know, the work that the International Menopause Society is doing is instrumental in making sure that women are, have access to really good information. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and giving thank us you. some of that good information. Thank you.